All right, so Cyberpunk 2077 can be quite confusing to mod, as you've all made quite clear in the comment section of my videos. So today I wanted to hopefully make that a little bit easier by showing you the 15 mods you need to install for Cyberpunk 2077. This is going to be a list of all the things you need and why, including modders resources, widely used frameworks, and some compatibility fixes in order to make your modding experience a lot easier. But before we get into all that, a quick message from this video sponsor, Atlas VPN, which is currently running a Christmas deal to get Atlas VPN Premium for just $1.70 per month plus six months extra with the bonus of a 30-day money-back guarantee. It's the best Atlas VPN offer of the year, so if you're wanting to take your privacy and security to the next level, access games, movies, and series not available in your region, or even server hop in your favorite multiplayer games, all while using their super fast connection speeds and easy-to-use app, then you can do so by clicking the link in the video description below. Of course, this is a limited time promotion for the holidays, so if you want to upgrade your online safety and experience, then you can find Atlas VPN Premium for $1.70 per month with their three-year subscription plus the six months extra down in the video description below. Thanks again to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. All right, so the first mod you're going to need is Cyber Engine Tweaks by Yamashi, which is not only a super powerful scripting framework, allowing mod authors to access the internal scripting features of the game, but it also is very powerful on its own, even if you ignore the hundreds of mods that require it. As the Cyber Engine Tweaks menu not only includes the console giving you access to the developer commands, but it even has a bindings menu allowing you to set up custom keybinds for any mods you install for it, as well as a settings menu that has some very handy features that I think a lot of people overlook. It includes things like the AMD SMT patch, which is an improvement over the CD Projekt Red updates, allowing you to fully take advantage of your AMD Ryzen CPUs. It's also got a few other performance-related options here that will be dependent on your setup and your preferences. But if you want to be able to skip the start menu, suppress intro movies, that sort of thing, there's also options for that in here as well. It's just such a powerful mod that is required by hundreds of others, many of which you'll probably want to install, and even if you don't, it's powerful on its own. Now, next up is Red Script by Jack3KM4, a script compiler that can be integrated with the game and used to add or replace game scripts. The way to think of this is it's sort of an alternative to Cyber Engine Tweaks, but they both work together and different mods depend on Red Script than they do Cyber Engine Tweaks. This is yet another modder's resource that is required by hundreds of mods, so it's one that you're going to want to install before anything else. Now, third up on this list is not necessarily a mod, that being Red Mod, which is actually a free DLC for Cyberpunk 2077. It's officially by CD Projekt Red, and it essentially adds integrated support for both installing and loading mods into the game. It's just an alternative way of loading mods and unlocks a few new possibilities for mod authors, such as custom sounds, animations, scripts, and more. Of course, this is available on GOG, Steam, and the Epic Game Store as an official DLC. I believe with the Epic Game Store, it comes installed by default, but on both GOG and Steam, you'll have to install it separately as a DLC. So just keep that in mind. Now to follow that up, those two are actually not compatible by default. The reason for this is because RedMod actually disables the Red Script compilation process, therefore breaking any mods that require it. So in order to fix this, we have CyberCMD by again Jack3KM4. It's just a small command line argument loader for Cyberpunk 2077 to add a compatibility layer between Red Script and RedMod. And the only requirement for CyberCMD to work as intended is Cyber Engine Tweaks. So you can can see sort of the loop that we're getting into with this video, different mods requiring other mods, which then require other mods. So I hope that this video ends up being a helpful resource. Now moving on, we've got Red 4 Extender which is a full-blown script extender for Red Engine 4. Similar to that of the Skyrim script extender, followed for script extender, this expands upon the scripting functionality of the game, allowing mod authors to add all new features, modify the game behavior, add new scripting functions, or even call existing ones. And this is a requirement for some things that get pretty advanced when it comes to modding this game. And while it doesn't have any requirements itself, it's best used alongside all the others on this list. In fact, our next mod is Tweak Excel by CyberX, which does indeed require Red 4 Extender to work. And just as a simple explanation as to what TweakXL is, it's a modding tool and a framework to create mods that modify TweakDB, which is the proprietary database of Red Engine 4, containing essential information about game entities and behavior. So you can go ahead and take a look at all the mods that require it, and you can see that it works in tandem with Red 4 Extender, as well as our next mod, 
that being Archive XL by Cyber. X, which is an archive extension loader. Essentially, it's a modding tool that allows you to load custom resources without touching the original game files, thus allowing multiple mods to expand the same resources without conflicts. Just as an example as to what Archive XL, Tweak XL, and Red 4 Extender allows you to do, is it allows you to add new items to the game as their own separate entities. So you can add all new weapons, all new clothing, without having to replace anything else, which is not supported by the official modding tool. Now our next mod is Input Loader by Jack Humbert. This mod specifically addresses the issues when it comes to installing multiple mods that have input XML files. This gets around the very painful manual process that we had to go through before, and is a requirement of a number of very popular mods. Now up next, we actually have two very similar mods that achieve the same thing, but through different means. The first of which is Mod Settings by Jack Humbert, which adds a red script configurable mod settings page to the main menu as well as in-game, allowing you to customize a wide range of options for some of your red script mods that support the mod settings menu. Some examples of this is always first equipped, Enhance Craft, Improve Minimap Zoom, In-World Navigation, Let There Be Flight, Limited HUD, Muted Markers, and more. All of the previously mentioned ones have actually been covered here on the channel. This is just a really great mod, allowing you to customize your Red Script mods to your liking, whether that be for balancing quality of life or just a simple preference. Now our next mod does a very similar thing, that being Native Settings UI by NexusGuy999. However, this is for mods that use Cyber Engine tweaks rather than Red Script. Once again, allowing you to customize a wide range of options for the mod that you have installed, and is a requirement of many more mods as Cyber Engine Tweaks has been around for longer and a lot of mods use it. So you'll likely find at least one mod on this list matches up with a mod that you want to install. Now this next mod isn't one that is super well documented, that being Material and Texture Override by Nimrain, which enables the game to load new materials. It works with both Legacy Archive mods as well as Red mods, and is often left out of the requirements for mods that do indeed require it. And this mod alone is required by well over 100 mods, but a lot of mods have not updated their requirements to properly list material and texture override, and instead reference you to install Cyberpunk 2077 texture override, which is deprecated and is not supported anymore. So if you've previously installed Cyberpunk 2077 texture override, be sure to uninstall it and install material and texture override instead. Now, our next mod isn't necessarily a requirement. It's not something you need. Rather, it's something that you should probably have installed just in case. That being CTD Helper by Jack Humbert, which will hopefully help you diagnose crash to desktop and script linking errors if you happen to run into any in the future. Now, our final three mods aren't necessarily requirements. They're not needed for the vast majority of mods. However, these are a bit more specific, as in they are required if you're installing a certain type of mod. The first of which is Appearance Change Unlocker Character Preset Manager by Potato of Doom. Now this mod has a few features to it, but the important one here is the preset manager, which not only allows you to save and load your own presets, however, as some of you might be familiar with, with the looks menu for Skyrim, for example, there are indeed presets that you can download from other people available on the Nexus. And of course, they require this mod to be able to load them. Now, our second to last mod is Virtual Atelier by Pacings. It's a super powerful framework allowing mod authors to integrate their own virtual stores in-game for any modded clothing items. And while it has become possible for mod authors to integrate these things directly into the base game that hasn't been taken advantage of by the vast majority of mod authors as it is a little bit more of a complicated process. So Virtual Atelier is a requirement for a wide range of clothing and even weapon mods. And our final mod for today is Virtual Car Dealer by DJ Kovrick. Essentially, it adds an in-game store that you can access from any of the PCs in your apartments, the same way that Virtual Atelier works. And while it's not widely supported, in fact, the only reasonable mods that use it are actually from DJ Kovrick and are vehicle packs that add existing vehicles, I do think that we might eventually start seeing some more mods that use it. Again, it's not an absolute necessity like a wide range of the mods that we covered in this video, but it's one that I thought was worth mentioning, and I do hope we see more from it in the future. And while that's it for the 15 mods you need to install for Cyberpunk 2077, there are still a lot of mods that I want to show off here on the channel. 
So if you're new around here and want to stick around, I'd suggest hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay tuned on those videos. But in the meantime, if you're looking for more mods to check out, I've got two videos for that. The one on the left is five mods to dramatically improve combat in Cyberpunk 2077. And on the right is 25 mods to overhaul quality of life in Cyberpunk 2077. Those two videos will get you a wide range of mods and ones that I still use to this day. But that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, this is Epoxy signing off.